Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. Sunday, August 2nd, 11.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. And I'm glowing like Jesus. How? This is my new dry fit shirt that I'm going to be wearing on the trip down the San Juan in just, well, 15 days. Birthday trip, Texas, Texas cave sediments upend meteorite explanation for global cooling. I'm sure you've all been talking about this. Many people have been sending me this article, and I've been investigating. Now, the people involved in this study negate all of the 1,600-plus studies that have come before them, which describe impactor hypotheses in the Younger Dryas events. Now, what this group over here fails to negotiate is that they haven't debunked all of the scientific papers, just a couple of them, because some of the papers suggest that the microspherules were created by fungus. But that doesn't necessarily explain the nanodiamonds or the stichuvite, the shock quartz, or any of the other impactors that cannot be created by anything other than an impact. So when you looked at shock quartz or some other high pressure anomaly on the surface that could only be caused by an impactor, maybe you run scared. But these guys didn't over here. <laughs> no, they just cherry picked some of the articles they could debunk and they did it. And they said, they're right. It's volcanoes. We win. So based on a study in one cave, the stratigraphy in one cave, which by the way, would be same, the same as you putting out a cup in your house and saying the whole world is infected by the bacteria that enters there. Completely ridiculous. So this is just completely ridiculous. And if we scroll down here, oh, physics.org, the number one completely ridiculous provider of non-information over the last three years, physics.org. Can you believe that? Most of the papers that we point out on physics.org are completely fluffy. They have so many holes in them that water runs through them, almost like a mesh screen. It's that insane. Now, these cave sediments may upend meteorite explanation for global cooling in this cave area of Texas because there's no impactors there. Hello? but it certainly doesn't negate all of the evidence we're going to show you. Now, when you talk about the Younger Dryas event, most people, including the scientists in this paper, are simply referring to this singular blue line here, number five. This is the 12,900-year event that supposedly caused the extinction of all the megafauna. It wasn't line four, or perhaps line three or line two, maybe not even line one. None of this had to do with the extinction of animals because they all went extinct here. And there's good reason for that because for several thousand years, the temperature had radically dropped by over 25 degrees C. That is a a lot of degrees. And yet, many of the scientists are unaware of all these other Dryas events. This is the so-called Younger Dryas event at 12,009, which dropped the temperature here about 10 degrees. But there was another event that dropped the temperature 8 degrees just a few hundred years prior, and another one that had a rapid cooling effect. And then the first Dryas here dropping the temperature more than the Younger Dryas. So what we have here is a complete cacophony of cosmic catastrophe over several thousand years. It's just not a period of some volcanic eruptions recorded in a Texas cave, for goodness sake. It is a period of proven multilateral bombardment of the planet, which is why we call it cosmic catastrophe. 
It has to do with uh, magnetic excursions, increased cosmic rays, increased impactors, as well as increased volcanism. It's a multivariate approach. Anyone as close-minded as the scientists that wrote this paper, in my opinion, are just juveniles, basically kindergartners in the big uh, science playpen. And I've been in the sandbox for 40 years, so please come kick some sand in my eyes and I'll show you how my bucket works. It certainly doesn't rely on limited information and cherry picking. Evidence from central Mexico in 2012 supports the Younger Dryas extraterrestrial impact hypothesis. Evidence for an extraterrestrial impact 12,900 years ago also contributed to megafaunal extinctions in Younger Dryas cooling. Now, they're trying to play this off as being debunked because fungus is responsible for all of the indicators at these sites. But I digress. They couldn't be further from the truth. If they're true scientists, they would actually want to incorporate the data into their science. Origin and provenance of spherules and magnetic grains at the Younger Dryas boundaries in 2013 has been debunked. I want to hear what those scientists have to say, in my opinion. Evidence from central Mexico supporting the Younger Dryas extraterrestrial impact hypothesis has been debunked. I want to hear from those scientists. I haven't. But volcanic ash reveals time transgressive abrupt climate change during the Younger Dryas. And that's true. But it was broad based. So what we have for thousands of years from 15,000 years ago to 12,900 years ago is a 3,000 year period of hella destruction, including hundreds of thousands of impactors, tens of thousands of volcanic eruptions, and the entire destruction of the Northern Hemisphere through terrestrial boreal forest inundation. And there's a lot of big words there. And that just means the entire planet was on fire, creating black mats that can be now correlated worldwide in the Northern Hemisphere, from North America through Siberia and back around the globe. The whole boreal forest burned to a crisp in a geologic instant. Same thing happened in the Carboniferous, which gave us all the coal that we've been burning which gave us all this knowledge and all this technology. Not photovoltaics, not wind power, coal, period. Now, if we actually want to learn some science, let's do it. The Younger Impact, the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis has thousands of peer-reviewed papers that you can go find that cost money and they're disseminated all over the world. They don't want you to know about these papers because they're trying to just blame it on volcanoes. And you know why? Oh, that page is missing. Because, well, the evidence for cosmic catastrophe 12,900 years ago is that Earth collided with fragments of a comet. And one of the last cosmic catastrophe videos I did explain the nature of the Younger Dryas uh, data and just the broad-based impact of the impactors worldwide. This is basically the Younger Dryas field. So this is where all the data sets come from, from the stratigraphy, where we determine if it's volcanic or extraterrestrial. There's also an Australasian impact field, which covers all of Australia and much of South China and Southern Asia, including like all those weird places you don't know about. Samoa, Saigon, Philippines, and all that stuff. All the way through Tonga. Even some of Micronesia. Now, whew, let's talk about what these idiots 
and I mean idiots, that wrote this paper. Son, Brandon, Foreman, Walters, and Doofus here. What they failed to recognize is that for the last 30 years, there have been hundreds of people, if not thousands, who have been scouring the earth for impactors around the world. There are also hundreds of peer-reviewed papers on the Carolina Bays, the Nebraska Rainwater Basins, and Saginaw Crater, which all occurred 12,900 years ago or so, plus or minus a few hundred, which puts us in that 15,000 to 13,000 time frame. That's when it all, that's when it hit the fan. 14,9 to 12,9, major fan hitting. And then from 12,9 to a 8,000 years ago, there was still major climatic effects, but the major extraterrestrial impactors ended 12,900 years ago. And they're coming back soon, hard. So we want to know what this impactor is. What are all these huge elongated craters? They were not formed by volcanoes, period. The Nebraska rainwater basins, not volcanic. The only explanation is that they are impactors. And at the same time, volcanoes were going off worldwide. So it's my supposition and many others, if you actually do the multidisciplinary scientific approach, that you're going to come to the same conclusion. Increased cosmic rays, a shift in the cycle, waning magnetosphere, and things fall in. The same thing that happens when our magnetosphere wanes enough, all of those CubeSats, tens of thousands, will impact Earth. And any other object that's just circling happily around the planet will fall in. And if you have a large object entering the atmosphere with such low protectivity, it's barely going to burn up, break into a million pieces, and literally riddle the coast. Now, it's my supposition that there are more impacts inland, but those have since been eroded. And this is because of a geologic explanation. There's something called the Appalachian Ridge here, and it controls the weather. So things on the inside of the Appalachians weather differently than the outside. And what we've seen here is exposed to us the nature of what happened 12,900 years ago. There are actually hundreds of thousands of impactors hitting all over the planet, even the inner craton. But I may digress. Early work as early as a decade ago have pointed out tens of thousands of impactors hitting the planet. There is no denial that something between 15,000 and 13,000 years ago pummeled the earth with shrapnel, so to speak. I even did a video on it where I explained that the largest crater that is unknown up in Washington state is unknown to 99.999% of the population on purpose. Why do they want to change the narrative to volcanic origin of the last Melting of the ice ages? I don't know. Maybe to quell the fear of an impactor or an imminent solar outburst coming soon. It's anybody's guess. But to allow people to publish such garbage in mainstream journals that claim to debunk the entire Younger Dryas impactor hypothesis is beyond pathetic. It's an attack on people like Graham Hancock and others that they claim to be conspiracy theorists, like myself. And you know what mainstream scientists can do? They can sit right on my thumb up. Yeah, because they're full of it. They're not scientists. They will not stand up to a debate ever in my classroom. They will not stand up to the efficacy of my questioning. They will not stand up to the mountains of evidence accrued in the last three decades of hundreds of thousands of impactors in the Northern Hemisphere at 12,900 years ago. If that's from big volcanoes exploding, 
Well, we need hundreds of thousands of volcanoes exploding and lots of crust going up in the air, which would create asteroids and comets. Where are the papers on that? They don't exist. There is no volcanic range on the east coast of North America. It's a passive margin. Even an undergraduate geologist knows that. If there are 15,000 plus craters on the east coast of the U.S. sometime between 15 and 12,000 years ago, you do the math. It wasn't a volcano. And these idiots do not deserve a second from physics.org. But this chart supplier will happily publish it right in your face like a disgrace against the data. The ones that know are the ones that listen to this channel. You might not even graduated high school. It doesn't matter. You're smarter than 99% of most scientists who are compartmentalized, retardalized, and brought into their own world. If you don't toe the line, you certainly can't explain number one, two, three, four, five, and six. Pick up sticks. <laughs> what say you, volcanologists? Why were all these impactors that we've been gathering data for the last three decades happening worldwide? Greenland. Massive impacts. Hudson Bay, all the Great Lakes, Carolina Bays, the Nebraska rainwater basins, and thousands of other impactors between 15,000 and 13,000 years ago. Why did that happen? It must have been volcanoes. Thanks, physics.org. You've opened my eyes a lot to how little I want to actually read your chart. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when you believe the hype. Check your data, check your sources, check your facts, and realize that for 30 years, well, 32 now, I've been working on this problem. And it's been really weird to me that I've gotten so much pushback from what I initially thought back then. It's come full circle. And I'm now able, as an independent investigator, to stick my flip-flop right up there. <whistles> Help me do it by sharing this video. Share it with like-minded people. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And be safe. We love you. Thanks to all of our Patreons. I wouldn't produce this video if I didn't have Patreons. I certainly would not work a 16-hour day if I didn't have any viewers. Share this with like-minded people. Let's keep the facts flowing. The nonsense is overwhelming us. And that's a boom. Be safe. We love you. Yeah, you can now click on one of these videos. Thanks.